Today, we're going to talk about how to create an engagement studio in Pardot. Engagement Studio lets you build, test, and report automated programs that send targeted emails. To access we go to the Automations section and then to the Engagement Studio section. Once here, we can see the programs we already have built, or add a new program, by clicking on Add New Program. This screen appears first, where we provide initial information, meaning we set the entry criteria for the journey. We give it a name and add it to a specific folder. We add a description, this is very useful when automations are complex, as we can provide a brief description so that team members reviewing it can understand it correctly. We add the list of users we want to enter the automation, and we can include a suppression list as well. If we add a suppression list here, users on that list won't enter the automation, even if they are on the recipient list. One interesting feature within Pardot is that you can configure emails to be sent only on specific days of the week and during specific hours. This is based on your chosen time zone. If this functionality is useful for your business, you can enable it, if not, you can leave it disabled. It's customizable according to your needs. It also allows prospects to enter the engagement multiple times. You always need to set a minimum of one day for a user to re-enter. You can then choose to allow users to enter an unlimited number of times or limit their entries to a specific count. Once you have set this up, you save it. Once you create your engagement program, you access the canvas. Using the plus icon, you can begin to build the individual steps in your program. When you use an action, trigger or rule option as a step in your logic, Pardot provides yes and no branches. The branches let you build out different paths for prospects who take different actions. Actions take an action on a prospect at a given point in time. Triggers listen for an event within a specified period of days. Rules check for specified criteria or values in the system. In this case, we'll start by adding an action, which means that when the user enters the dynamic list, we want to perform a certain action. Here are all the available options for adding actions. You're allowed to perform the action and add the user to a list, add them to a Salesforce campaign, adjust their score, add tags, assign them to a group, assign them to a self-assigned queue, assign a user, change a prospect's field, create a task, notify a user, remove from a list, remove tags, or send an email. In this case, we're going to select send an email. We can choose to send it immediately, wait for a few days, or schedule it for a specific date. I'll select immediate and choose the email we want to send. When we go back and click again, all the options appear once more. In this case, let's explore the options that allow us to add triggers. Triggers allow us to listen for something that has happened. We can check if a user has clicked on a custom redirect, clicked on an email, opened an email, downloaded a file, filled out a form, interacted with a form handler, or taken an action on a landing page. In this case, since my previous action was sending an email, I'm going to set up a trigger to check if the user has clicked on any link in the email. For this trigger, I want to determine if the user has clicked on any link. We can choose to verify if the user has clicked on any link, or we can select a specific link. In this case, I'm going to choose to check if the user has clicked on any link, 
and I want to evaluate this trigger after two days to give the user time to receive the email and click on a link. So now we have it created, and what this allows us to do is take one path or another. In other words, if the user has clicked on any link in the email, we will go down one path, and if they haven't clicked, we will follow a different path. If we add a rule, the rule evaluates whether the user meets a specific requirement. For instance, if they are already assigned to a Salesforce queue, assigned to a specific user, have a particular assigned status, belong to a certain list, or are part of a particular campaign. It can also check if specific fields are filled, if they have associated tags, a campaign with a specific campaign status, or a specific score. In other words, it will check if a user meets these criteria. If it's CEO, we can add another action, for instance, adding them to a specific list or notifying a Salesforce user to contact them immediately. In this case, I'm going to ask it to check if the custom field title is CEO and to evaluate this immediately after the user has clicked. I'll save it and you'll see that another path has appeared. So, if the title is CEO, it will take us down one path, and if it's not CEO, it will take us down another. If it's CEO, we can add another action, for instance, adding them to a specific list or notifying a Salesforce user to contact them immediately. When someone has clicked on this email and their title is CEO, it might be interesting to notify a user in Salesforce. This could be crucial for an important campaign, such as offering a product demo. So, when someone of this level clicks on an email, we always want to notify a specific user who will be responsible for contacting them, offering the demo, and so on. We've now covered the three types of actions that can be performed in an engagement studio. We hope this video has been helpful and in upcoming videos, we'll explain more about engagement studio, including reports, tests and timing.